how are you? Shall we study Bible together? Uh, before we do, shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for your presence and please teach us your word today. Thank you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Well, uh, we have been studying the uh, Revelation and then so far what we have studied is that uh, the, the, the beginning part of the uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation, that Jesus spoke to seven churches directly. And then after that, the John was sent up to the, uh, the throne of God that were in, a, in the heaven. And that's where the John going to stay the rest of the revelation that he going to see the vision about the future and the prophecy so that he will able to you know prophesize and tell us about what will happens until the Christ return so we can prepare for his return uh, now today we're going to read from the chapter 5 of the uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 1 to 14 and uh, the title I gave today's message is the slain of lamb now let me show you the picture of the, what John saw. Uh, now this is just an image that when he went up in the throne he saw four creatures and the surrounding the throne there was 24 elders and um, what he saw was so significant uh, that, that what's surprising is that this particular location at the throne of God it's actually the people are worshiping God. This is a place to worship. <laughs> So obviously, uh, the God demand the worship uh, him. So, but that's what the John saw. And then now we're gonna read the what happened after this from the chapter five. Now chapter five really mainly focus about the Son of God. Uh, shall we read from the uh, chapter uh, five, verse one? Then I saw in the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne, a scroll written on the front and back and sealed with seven seals. Wow, that's very interesting. Uh, what John saw next was he saw the, um, the God holding in, in his right hand a scroll. Now this scroll, it seems very special, has the seven seals. Uh, let me show you the picture. It could be, looks like this. It's a scroll and have a seven seals. Um, now, I'm a little bit interesting that why God had this scroll in his right hand. Is the right hand has some significant meaning? Well, uh, when we look at the Bible, the right hand be used as like a, a correct or right uh, hand. It is a, a correct hand or like it's a main principle hand. Uh, for example, if I read in Genesis chapter 48, verse 18, uh, let me read that part. Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. Now, uh, that scene was uh, uh, when Joseph was talking to Jacob. And now that Jacob is going to br uh, bless the uh, two sons uh, of the Joseph, and somehow, uh, Jacob crossed his hair like this, and then he started to uh, give them a blessing. And Joseph said, "Oh no, 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 father! Uh, you know, uh, you know, this side is the firstborn. So uh, please put your right hand on the uh, firstborn, uh, which indicate the right hand uh, means the principle. It is the main uh, hand. Um, the left hand." Uh, seems like a supporting side of the uh, hand. So when God had that particular scroll in his principal hand, that means that is a very significant uh, uh, scroll. That is the scroll. It's really uh, written about his will. Now, uh, the word scroll uh, is uh, uh, bibidium or bibidios in uh, 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 New Testament, which means the word Bible came from that particular word and then be used uh, at least two ways. One is to record all the history and all the actions. Um, let me read you the uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead 
the great and small, standing before the throne. Then books were opened, and another books were opened, the book of life, so the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to their deeds. Now, the word uh, translated in uh, chapter 20, verse 12, the word book, that is actually the same word, uh, Bibidion, which means Bible, uh, or, I mean, which means scroll. Uh, so it's the same word. So the, the Bibidion, uh, or uh, scroll, or book, uh, being used to describe that there will be a written record uh, of the every action you or me or everybody did and then the based on that record now that God can judge people so that uh, when the word scroll that potentially means all the record uh, that uh, it is enough evidence to judge us and uh, it's re re potential written somewhere in a book now also the scroll can be a uh, word of God. Uh, let me read uh, Jeremiah chapter 32, uh, 36, verse 2. Get a scroll. Write on it everything I have told you to say about Israel, Judah, and all the other nations since I began to speak to you in the reign of Joshua until uh, Josiah, Josiah until now. Now, what God demanding to uh, uh, Jeremiah to write down what I'm going to say. And that's what the Jeremiah did. And so that is the really book of Jeremiah, which means when the scroll, the Bibidion came, that means, uh, the potentially means a record and potentially means God's word. And so now God holding the scroll with a seven seal, which means in this scroll, there is a God's word, God's plan, and probably including all the evidence that why he can judge people and all the record of the entire human and then the, uh, so on. This, this scroll is very important, significant scroll. Um, now, unfortunately, a uh, very strange scroll too because this scroll has uh, written inside and outside. Uh, the only place we found in a scroll with the inside outside it came from the uh, Ezekiel because normally the scroll or any writing in the ancient time it is not written both sides um, we have seen the some uh, some cases that are in a papyrus writing that sometimes some scribe wrote uh, front and back but it's a, that's rare uh, most of a scroll is not written that way so why this scroll has written both sides. Um, what do you think? Is it, is it you know, because uh, God wanted to save the paper? <laughs> but, but, well, let me read what Ezekiel count. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 is describe uh, the scroll in Ezekiel. Let me read. Then I looked and realized a hand had stretched out to me, and in it was written scroll. He unrolled it before me, and it had written on the front and back. Written on it were lament, mourning, and war. Now, in case of Ezekiel, uh, he also saw the scroll, and his case was the scroll was opened for him, and then it was written uh, front and back. Um, that's very interesting. And also, God told Ezekiel to surprisingly eat this scroll. Uh, I didn't know human can eat the scroll, but let me read uh, the uh, same Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1 and 3. He said to me, Son of man, eat what you see in front of you. Eat this scroll, and then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he fed me the scroll. He said to me, Son of man, Feed your stomach and fill your belly with this scroll I am giving to you. So I ate it, and it was sweet like honey in my mouth. That's a very strange scene. Now, Ezekiel saw the scroll, and uh, God told him, told him to eat it. And then, in case of Ezekiel, he said, he opened his mouth, <laughs> and then got shovel. <laughs> The scroll into his mouth 
like a like a eat like eating like a burrito. You know, I mean, uh, what do you feel like if somebody stick the burrito into your mouth? And go, you know, <laughs> but that, that's what they say. And then 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 the Ezekiel said it was tasted like a honey. But then the key point is that uh, God let Ezekiel eat the scroll and uh, uh, let Ezekiel to talk about the future and the prophesies. So in case of John, the very probably the uh, similar way this scroll being used. This scroll is a very important scroll. It's written front and back means probably meant that this is the word of God that God wanted to really convey to us in the future events, in the prophesizing to others. The only problem is, in case of John, this scroll is not opened for him. It has the seven seals, which means even one seal, you can open it, but they have the seven, which means impossible to open it. Um, usually the word seven being used like a perfect number, somehow God loves the number seven and uh, usually meant like a perfection or whatever so totally you cannot open this scroll this has the total secret it has been a uh, secret for everybody and no one can open it now uh, I wonder you know uh, why God showed this scroll in here to John uh, now just think about it if there is a war between God and Satan. Don't you think Satan, as enemy of God, he probably wanted to know the content of the God's plan. See, if you're fighting, and then if you know the enemy's plan, you can prevent or you can prepare for the uh, battle and uh, against the enemy. And so you definitely wanted to understand or the, the opponent's plan. And um, but see. Uh, if you really needed to convey your message to your allies or your soldier, what you're going to do? You don't want your enemy to know your plan. And, but at the same time, um, you, you need to convey your message to your you know, uh, 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 ally. Uh, well, naturally, at the case of war or battlefield, that you're going to en uh, en 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 encrypt, encrypt the message. And um, I just wonder, maybe that's how Bible are written. Uh, you know, Bible is a fruit of imagery and also the uh, typology or type uh, and uh, so on. And then the reason for that is probably it is really uh, en encrypted. And, um, you know, but in the, 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 the God side, uh, and his own soldier, they can understand because they know how to uh, decode it or decrypt their God's message. Uh, now, why do I think the Bible is encrypted? Because, uh, well, one thing is uh, Satan's, uh, but then the other thing is uh, that is a really good way to really tell us about the Bible because, uh, for example, the Bible really didn't give us the name of Jesus until he was born. And uh, but then give us a, in, enough inf information about Jesus, and then so that when he was born, the all the God side people they realize that's him. He is a Messiah. Uh, but then uh, if the word Jesus was revealed in the Old Testament, the Satan could have uh, prepared and say, "Oh, we know that he was going to born in the Bethlehem, and so that uh, the they're going to research." If any baby is named Jesus, and then if somebody says, "Yeah, he was born, he went to the Egypt," and then maybe, maybe at the you know Satan side going to grab the Jesus and kill the, you know I mean, when he was a baby, but that the name Jesus was uh, uh, inscripted, and but in the uh, allies and uh, his soldier, uh, we understand who he is. So you know the people realized that Jesus was born, but the enemy which is the Satan side, had a very difficult to figure out. And uh, because there's a, there's a war between, I think, the God side and Satan side. And the Bible must be inscripted. Uh, so that's, that's, that's another reason. Probably this is a sealed. Because so that no one can open it. No one can know the God's plan. Um, 
sometimes we like to know the future because if we know what will happen in the future, we can prepare. Uh, you know, some of you probably don't you want to know when you were, uh, you know, long time ago, what will happen to you? Maybe someone say, yeah, if I know the future, I could have not married. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, well, I'm just teasing. But then what I mean is that uh, Satan must like to know about the content of the scripture. Uh, let me read the next verse, uh, verse 2 and 3. And I saw a powerful angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to break it seal? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the uh, earth uh, was able to open the scroll or look into it. Now, very interesting, they are apparently a very uh, prestigious angel. Uh, in, the, in the case of angel, uh, we think there must be some kind of hierarchy system in the angelic uh, realm. So that, uh, this angel seems like a very high position uh, angel, potentially archangel, we don't know. But then this angel saying, who can open this scroll? And then apparently no one. Nine heaven means no angels, um, not even one can open in the heaven, and uh, definitely no one on earth, which no human can open, and uh, no one's under the earth. Under the earth potentially means uh, the, all the people who died already, uh, but which means no one can open this scroll. Now that really tells us this scroll is so significant. This scroll has all the real secret, real uh, secret that God has been kind of a sealed. God decided to not to tell anyone about his plan. And so this scroll is a very, very significant scroll. It's a, it is just a core of God's plan and definitely it is not the reveal to Satan. So no one knows, of course, including Satan's and humans and the, including angels, no one knew the content of this scroll. And so this is a very, very significant scroll. Then what happens that, uh, you know, after this, if no one understands, no one, no one knows about this scroll, uh, let, me, let me read uh, the verse 4 and 5. So I began weeping bitterly because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Look, the lions of the tribe of Judas, the roots of David, has conquered. And thus he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Now what happened was that after John realized that no one can open the scroll. Somehow he started to cry. <laughs> but why? Why he had to cry like that? I don't understand. We think about this. If you or like John's position, and you saw that God's in the right hand had a scroll with the seven sealed, and you know, big angel came and said, Oh, who gonna open this? And then John realized no one can open this scroll. I'm not gonna cry. I'm saying, oh, that's right. Well, God damn, he said, no one can open it. No, man, that's. But in case of John, he cried like crazy. <laughs> why? Why John? What do you think? Why John cry like a baby? That that doesn't make sense, don't you think? Well, probably John was so envious about Ezekiel, maybe because in case of Ezekiel, he was even fed. He just opened his mouth. And then the God fed the you know scroll, uh, but, but then in case of John, um, he can even open it, and he can he, he maybe maybe John really wanted to know about future. He really he really wanted to know what would happen. But I but why he cried so bad? Well, uh, the probably potential reason he cried was probably he knows that sealing sealing of the God's word means actually is a really uh, is a curse. Uh, let me read it's Isaiah chapter 29 uh, verse 11 and 12. Uh, let me read that part. To you this entire prophet prophetic revelation is like a words in the sealed scroll. When they uh, when they hand it to one who can read and said read it 
he responds, I can't because it is sealed. Or when they hand the scroll to one who cannot read, said, read it, he says, I cannot read. Now that really, the Isaiah chapter 29, really indicating that because Israeli is really mischievous, they're not doing right things, that God, the part of his curse upon Israel, that God decided not kind of tell future. And uh, God is not going to tell the prophecy. Um, you know, God often uh, kind of uh, gave them a curse and say that you don't understand, you, even you don't, you don't even accept the Christ, uh, that, you know, I mean, you don't even re understand the Bible. Uh, you know, quite interestingly, uh, that when we read the Bible, the one good way to uh, decode it or decrypt the Bible is through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, quite often Satan probably wanted to know about content of the Bible, but uh, Satan nor a person who are not believing Jesus, uh, who, who are not really led by Holy Spirit, they don't understand the Bible quite often. But people who, uh, who has the Holy Spirit in them, uh, because of power of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, the sometimes Christian, we Christian, uh, quite often understand the Bible quite different from the non-Christian and quite often we were so moved as we read the Bible because we understand God's message more clearly than non-Christian people and that is the one best way to probably uh, decrypt the message because uh, I think the Bible is encrypted you know I think so I think the Bible is um, you know you just read the Bible quite often uh, non-Christian people don't understand at all they just they sort of, what, what, what but then we understand and it's very important for us to tell others about the gospel and the content of the Bible. Now, here is uh, basically John cry, but then the sealing, sealing the scroll means actually the curse. It is God telling us that He will not reveal His plan. And that means there is no hope. Um, you know, we, we don't know what will happen in the future. Uh, we don't know we'll be saved. You see, if this world as way goes, um, this world is such a harsh place to live. And John maybe cry that he maybe thought that we don't have any hope, uh, we don't have any future because God sealed, sealed the future. And then uh, um, maybe there's a curse. Uh, so maybe he cried. There's a no really hope on us, uh, our you know entire uh, people. But good news is there was an elder. Uh, sitting right next to John. Well, somehow John went all the way close to the center of the throne, right next to the 24 elders. That's that's amazing that he was that that close close to God's throne. But this one elder told John, "Hey, buddy, don't cry. <laughs> the, the, I tell the good news. Uh, there is uh, you know the lions of the uh, Judas, uh, and then all the you know roots of the David." And uh, because since he uh, conquered, he had a victory, now that he can open it. And so apparently the elder knows that uh, this scroll can be opened because, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that this, that, well, obviously this is the Jesus that who really uh, well, died for us. He can open it. Now, um, the word this elder used, there are the lions of the Judas. Uh, that really came from uh, Genesis chapter 49, uh, verse 9 and 10. Uh, let me read that too uh, for you, that part. Judas is a lion's a cub. Uh, from the prey, play, play he, my son, you have gone up. He crouched, he uh, lay down as a lion and as a lion who dared to stir him up. The scepter will not depart from Judas, nor the ruler's stuff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Now that uh, prophecy in Genesis 49 verse 9, I read it in the New American Standard Bible. I usually use uh, New English uh, translation, 
Uh, but then the why I didn't use a new English because uh, uh, NET uh, uh, used the word shiro. Uh, the you know eventually what the prophecy is uh, the uh, sh uh, in the lions of the Judas, and uh, he's basically shiro that will come until that point, and then when shiro comes, uh, basically everything will be okay. But then uh, the word shiro is such a mysterious word. Uh, Obviously, it's supposed to be some person or some being, but uh, uh, you know, really, scholar does not know what the Shiro means. Uh, there's a, actually another location, the town named Shiro, but then the, this case is the Shiro is not obviously town. It's supposed to be a person, but then the, who is he? And then some people, some scholar believe that may possibly be mistranslated or misscribed, and some. Uh, scholar start the same that may be to whom it belong and um, so the NET uh, translated as to whom it belonged um, I'm not too sure about that part because this is obviously it's a prophecy and if the Bible is encoded um, you know it should be stayed that way if you read um, uh, Hebrew like if you see this this is written in Hebrew and basically here is said that until that comes Shiro and to him the uh, obedience of the people so basically until that comes or he comes means that possibly Shiro until Shiro comes and so um, the, if we this we read the Bible uh, as you know straightforward that uh, what Shiro really meant means a uh, 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 peace giver or people who brings peace so we can translate it as until the peace giver uh, comes uh, then the basically this entire uh, prophecy in uh, uh, well the chapter 49 the uh, Genesis 10 um, obviously kind of link with the revelation here uh, the elder told John the, the lions of the Judas obviously means a peacemaker and indicate Jesus um, so that the, how we're going to look uh, or how we translate the Bible I think it's very important in case of the translation in this case I think it's uh, a new American uh, standard Bible <laughs> I think to translate it more better than uh, NET uh, but anyway uh, now let me read um, after this uh, what happens then I saw standing in the middle of the throne and of the four living creature and in the middle of the elders a lamb that appeared to have been killed. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirit of God sent out into all the earth. Now interestingly, that after the elder told John, then don't cry buddy that uh, you know the lions of the Judah which means the Shiro which means uh, the peacemaker which means Jesus himself because he conquered he he got the victory uh, the you know now he can open the seal um, the interestingly that John saw Jesus and uh, really the center of the throne uh, where supposedly God is because he actually saw the center of all uh, uh, you know uh, 24 uh, elders and then the right center of the four living creature means that Jesus uh, is where the God is and then uh, but but interestingly this Jesus instead of in, suppose he's a victorious God right he, he 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 received the victory that's why he can open the seal but he appeared as a slain lamb why what why he's standing like a bloody slain lamb. Now, the, with the seven eyes and all that descriptions, if you see next picture, some artists uh, wrote, uh, made like a lamb with the seven eyes. That that looks kind of a grotesque to me. That that's kind of a scary. That's like a monster. I mean, I don't know how they can make because it just uh, said it's a seven eyes. <laughs> that, that's kind of strange. That's kind of a I don't know what that is. But anyway. But the seven eyes is a symbolic, according to the Bible itself said, that the seven spirit of God 
and uh, of course in the uh, you know, uh, earlier verse, uh, verses in uh, Revelation we understand the seven spirit of God or seven eyes that really describe the church so Jesus through the church he's actually observing us and history he actually watching the church itself very very uh, carefully but at the same time through the church that he actually appeared his glory he's really a deity uh, see the church is here to really uh, tell people about Jesus and um, you know some church must be uh, some church may be a uh, fail to do that and w which is sad but we the church or Christian we're here the reason we're here is really the revealed Jesus glory or God's glory into this darkness we are the light in the world and uh, see it is not us really shining it is a God or Jesus himself is shining and we are kind of reflecting his light into this world and the church is supposed to be the only place that people feel is a God's presence and uh, through that these seven churches uh, the seven type of churches that Jesus really indicate his glory and thus here is a slain lamb that Jesus standing with the seven eyes uh, indicate that his seven through, through seven churches that apparently uh, he's really showing his glory and his deity but why have to be slain lamb slain lamb means that basically he died uh, for us it, it, he, he's used as uh, imagery of uh, sacrificial lamb um, now uh, one thing I can tell you is uh, why he appeared as a slain lamb because I can say he died for all people that's why he really died for everybody I know some of you with a Calvinistic uh, viewpoint that some of you maybe argue uh, that John Calvin said that he died only for elect but I think I have to I have to read the Bible what the Bible said for example the second Corinthians chapter 5 14 to 15 let me read that part for the love of Christ controls us since we have concluded this that Christ died for all therefore all have died and he died for all so that those who lived should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised um, well according to the Bible Jesus died for all means all the people have ever existed um, the second Corinthians uh, is not the only part saying that uh, let me read uh, first Timothy chapter 2 verse 6 as well who gave himself as a ransom for all revealing, revealing God's purpose at his appointed time well let me read the Hebrew chapter 2 verse 9 as well but we see Jesus who was made lower than, than the angels for a little while now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by God's grace he would experience death on behalf of everyone now the, I really think the Bible telling us that Jesus death on the cross it's really for everyone for every human beings interestingly um, I research how many humans has ever existed uh, right now we have about 8 billion people in the earth that's a lot but then when I find out through the uh, my research uh, that what I find out is um, the 4,000 years before Christ uh, on the, you know biblical history there there be about 50 billion people has ever existed and then after Christ next 2,000 years until now this about the 50 billion, uh, 50 billion people uh, ever existed also the same amount which means the total 100 billion people have ever existed and Christ died for this entire 100 billion human ever existed from the Adam 
to all the way to the point the last baby uh, before his return that the entire hundred billion people and it's about the equal numbers so that all the people before Christ they look future about their salvation and all the people after Christ which is including us we look back to his salvation and to believe in Jesus death and then we understand he died for all uh, now this makes great sense to me because because he died for all the people we human doesn't have absolutely no excuse to say something like oh you created me just to send me to hell because what God will tell you that if we argue him say oh I have to go to hell but but why you made me you you hate me so much that you even decided to you know uh, when the uh, beginning you decided for me to go to hell and that's not fair God then we'll probably the God will tell I die for you too and but you the one didn't chose me uh, you see see I know some people will argue like uh, well especially like uh, people like a uh, Japanese will say oh the Christianity is such a terrible religions it's a uh, really the you know uh, only Christian can go to uh, heaven and all the heathens and all the people who even now have the chance to listen to the gospel like uh, our ancestor see the Japanese for example their ancestor is uh, very important to them but they will say hey if you think you know our ancestor is automatically go to hell because God hate them uh, that I cannot believe Christianity is such a such a such a stupid religion like that but the true Christianity, what the Bible says is not. Bible said Jesus died for every human all. Means including the uh, heathen, including people even didn't have the chance to listen to the gospel. G God died for everybody. See, issues are, well, if people didn't have a chance to know Jesus, how they could go to heaven? Well, the, according to the Bible, whoever believe in God. See, God will judge people based on what the knowledge they have. If some people knew about the gospel, God, God gonna judge why you didn't listen to the gospel, or why you didn't believe in gospel. People who did not have the opportunity even to hurt that, uh, God will judge based on their faith in God. Uh, for example, there's a guy named Lazarus. He standing. He was sitting the front of the rich man, according to the Book of Luke. And then the, this Lazarus, uh, obviously, he didn't know about the Jesus uh, cross because he didn't. Jesus, uh, who, this story told by Jesus uh, before he was went up on the cross. So in this case of the Lazarus, didn't know anything about Jesus' death or uh, or resurrection yet. And then this Lazarus, however, went to the uh, bosom of Abraham. And he was saved, uh, which means Lazarus, who was a very poor man, uh, the, his, he was licked by a dog or something like that. That this poor man, uh, that he probably let God handle his life. He trusts God, oh Lord, please, you know, uh, uh, control my life. But the rich man inside of the uh, palace, um, he he didn't believe in God. He just uh, lived according to his own uh, uh, belief and he himself. And then this guy went to hell. See, the salvation is really based on faith alone. And uh, so that whoever believe in God and God's word uh, is going to hell, uh, heaven. Now, that the sin of the Adam or sin itself means not be believing God's word or not believing God and that is a really the fundamental thing so whoever believes in God and let God handle his entire life uh, that you know uh, that person had the potential to go to heaven now of course I not position to tell you that who went to heaven and who who didn't go to heaven because that's not you know uh, frankly I don't know as a human that I am but in the God knows and uh, 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 you know based on the biblical stand, uh, understanding the uh, the salvation is based on faith alone uh, so basically Jesus died for all and no human had uh, can give the excuse you really didn't save me because the, Jesus will tell you I die for you the issues are however issues are people reject Jesus now uh, it's almost like this that uh, you know you if you are in a jail and if the jailer tell you say oh 
you are very lucky guys. Uh, you know, I mean, at the, uh, your dad uh, paid your penalty. And so that you can, you, you're free, you can go out. So the jailer opened the jail and, you know, goodbye. And then if I'm in the inside of a jail, I would say, really? My dad paid the penalty? Oh, thanks, dad. And I would just go out from the jail. But see, some people don't believe that. Some people say, I cannot believe my dad would do that. My dad, I cannot believe my dad loves me so much that paid all the penalty. I'm going to stay inside the jail. Then those person who did that, uh, when they stand in front of God, they, they will say, hey, you know, why you didn't say me? The Jesus said, I didn't say, I already paid all the penalty. You are the one didn't accept the you know, invitation. And the people who did not believe in God, they end up same place that all the people who did not believe in God, and that including even Satan's. So they end up the same place where the Satan is, and then Satan is the one going to torment them because Satan hate God, and Satan hate us too because we are made in the image of God. And Satan knows if he tormented people, that gonna suffer. That really painful for God. That God loves us so much, and God don't want even one person to go to hell. But the person who reject. God's uh, offer the salvation of Jesus that God did not and um, people who did not believe in God's word they end up the same place as Satan um, the, uh, together with all others who did not believe in God's word and that's what we call the hell and that they're going to be tormented eternally uh, that's what the Bible telling us God don't want anybody to go to hell and um, you know but that's that's we know that that's we end up so this is very important for God the people who believe in uh, God. Now, let me continue to read uh, the next verse 7 and 8. Then he came and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who had seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and twenty-four elders threw themselves to the ground before them. Each of them had the harp and golden balls full of incense, which were the prayer of the saints. Now here is the 24 elders and the four uh, uh, living creature. They are now actually really praising Jesus and um, uh, praising Jesus. And then also the, uh, the elder had the ball with the prayer of the, all the believers. And then our prayer is thy kingdom comes. See. That really the Jesus he died for everybody now he's a victory because he died for all he have authority to judge all and let me read after that um, you know and then the uh, 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 very important part is uh, Jesus received the scroll which means the father gave the authority to Jesus to judge uh, let me read the John chapter 3 verse 35 the father loved the son and had to place all things under his authority. Uh, chapter 5, verse 22. Furthermore, the Father does not judge anyone, but has assigned all judgment to the Son. So that Jesus, because he died for all, now he can judge all, and he has now authority to actually uh, uh, execute the, this secret God's plan, and he's the one who has authority to open the seal. And let me read the 9 and 10. Now the angel going to give the doxology to the uh, Jesus. They were singing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal because you are killed. And at the cost of your own blood, you have purchased for God's person from every tribe, language, people, and nation. You have appointed them as a kingdom and priest to serve our God and they will reign on earth. Uh, well, I, I'm sorry, the verse 9 and 10 means like uh, that the four living creature and 24 elders really give the doxology to Jesus. And then they are really praising Jesus because he actually had the victory. He actually died for all the people and because now that he have a right, he have authority to judge all the people and the Father gave authority to some. And uh, now next is the angel uh, uh, gave the doxology, the, uh, verse 11 and 12. 
Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels in circle around the throne, as well as the living creatures and the elders. Their numbers was ten thousand times ten thousand, thousand times thousand, all of whom were singing in the loud voice, Worthy is a lamb who was killed to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and praise. An amazing the entire angels, a uh, multitude of angels really uh, praising Jesus, his death on the cross. And then the, because of that, he has not uh, authorized to really judge. And let me go to the verse, next verse, 15 and 14. Then I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, under the earth, in the sea, and all that is in them, singing, To the one seated on the throne, and to the Lamb be praised, honor, glory, and ruling power forever and ever. And the four living creatures were saying, Amen. And the elders threw themselves to the ground and worshiped. Now, entire creature, uh, except men and uh, Satan, is actually praising God, um, uh, Jesus. See, these 24 elders and the four creatures, and also the entire, uh, the good angels, and also the entire living creatures, they really praising Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you really victory. You die for all. And then we have a, we have a salvation. We have a future. We don't have to cry anymore. The God's kingdom will come. The only being not really praising Jesus here is a Satan and man. That's sad. Now, the, the whole point is, that John cried so much because he didn't see the future. He thought that, think about this world, the, such a terrible world to live. We have uh, such a crime and all that. I wish I live in a perfect world. I wish there's no crime, no hush bush. Everybody loves each other. I love to live in uh, really paradise, everywhere, the wonderful place. But unfortunately, that's not what we are. We live in this world. It's such a terrible place. I have to worry about who's going to steal my things and all that. If this continue like that, I'm going to cry like John did. I, we don't have any future. But fact is, there is a future because Jesus died for all. And uh, he resurrected. He was so, total victory. He can now have the power to judge. Because Jesus received the scroll with the seven seal, now he can open it. Means that God's kingdom will come. This perfect world will come. See, the end of the world is not really bad news at all. It's actually the pain of the birth pain. Birth pain means actually they're going to have a baby. See, when I had the first baby, um, until I had a baby, uh, it was a pain, yes. But then after I had a baby, all the pain, all, all the hassle, bustle, it's gone. It was such a joyful uh, moment. When, as soon as I hold my son into my arm, um, I was so happy. Uh, so that will exactly what happens. That now that everybody's praising, everybody's so happy praising Jesus because Jesus is one made the possible. He's the one going to bring the kingdom to us, and that's what we learn from the verse five, chapter five of the book of Revelation. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for your teaching and thank you for really Jesus, his death on the cross, because he really paid all the penalty for every person. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Well, have a nice day. Bye-bye.